Welcome to Jeffrey's. I'm Jeffrey. I'm the butcher. What we're doing today is cutting up a pig. I'm gonna turn it over and removing the front shoulder first. Several parts here. Boston butt, Cali ham, pork shank, and the front foot, also called the pig toe. We're gonna go about an inch and a half past the knuckle right over here, that joint. And just open up the skin. Not too deep. We've opened up the front shoulder between the second and third rib. At home, you can use a cleaver. I'm gonna be using a bandsaw. The bandsaw gives me a clean, precise cut. And it'll be easier for you to see. The spinal cord, removing that first. There's meat from the rib, there's meat off the spine, off the blade bone, and for braising makes a stew that's absolutely unbelievable. The pork shoulder. Fabulous. We're gonna remove the, por the pork shoulder from the Boston butt. We just broke apart the front shoulder into its five basic component parts the Boston butt. In my opinion, the best piece of meat on the pig. Pig's feet. You know something? If you haven't had pig's feet, you have no idea. Fabulous. Asibuku, usually out of veal, but the asibuku of pork. The pork shoulder, also known as Cali ham. Good for roasting, inexpensive. Feeds the family. This, if cut whole, from here to there is the rib belly. But first thing we want to do, remove the fresh ham. Now, the spinal cord, notice it makes a turn to the left, then a turn to the right. At the second turn, we're going to cut it open so we get a line to work with and bring it to our household banzo. Next, I'm removing the pork loin from the rib belly. I separated the rib belly from the pork loin. Pork loin being pork chops. The rib belly, actually, it's several parts here. Here's the spare rib. Remove the spare rib. You feel the top of the bone. You can actually see it if you pull back some of the fat. I'm gonna take the knife. Cut the tip off, and with your fingers, you can feel it, because it's separated. Just by bringing the knife along the top of the spare rib, it opens up. I'm just opening up the seam. There's no wrong way to cook it. Ribs are the king. Rib belly. This is making a comeback. It's now a very fashionable piece of meat. You can find it in some of the finest restaurants. Braised, it's soft, it's tender, fried, it's hard, it's crispy. Pancetta, take off the skin, roll it up. Look familiar? We cure it with salt, and sugar, and spices. That's pancetta. And then, we bake in nothing like quality bacon. Now, pork chops, pork loin. The rib section, by the rib. The loin section, by the tenderloin. Loin end chops, rib end chops. Now we'll be cutting this down to show you what the individual chops look like. Take the rib end, which is the first three ribs. Place right down the rib. Country style spare ribs. How many people know about it? Down south they do. Great rib. Slice it down the center, diagonal cut, and you have a spare rib. That's absolutely fantastic. Look how lean that is. There's so much more to eat. 
country style sparrows. I like it more than the sparrow. We took the rib end off, and that's the beginning of the Seneca chop, a rib chop. To remove the other loin end, now three inches in, you'll see a bone. And just slice it right past that bone. I happen to think this is a great piece of meat. And most people don't really realize what it is or how to work with it. For you have the end of the tenderloin. And if this was a cow, it would be the sirloin. If we slice into pork chops or making it into a small boneless roast. Bring the tip of my knife right down the side of the spine, just pulling it back. It'll just release itself. I'm gonna remove the skin. Now, look. Medallions, good texture, good marbling, but you wanna be fancy. Lay it down in a piece of wax paper, fold it over, and with your cleaver, Opens it up for pork cutlet. This is great. So, pork loin and pork chops. There's several and they're distinct. The loin chop, not always the most preferred. People like the bone. They like the rib end because the meat is similar to that of a spare rib. This is the rib chop off the rib end about six inches into the loin, you can see over here, see how it changes to where it's a solid piece of meat, all the same color, where here we have two different colors, this little cap starts to diminish and becomes the eye of a loin. The center of the loin is preferred by most. Now, why is that? The center cut is prettier, and sometimes people prefer prettier over texture. Now, I like this top portion over here. I like the texture of this chop better than this one but it's not as visually perfect. This is visually perfect. Right now, I'm gonna move the tenderloin. With a little eye on the medallion over here, that's the tenderloin. I'm taking my knife, putting it right at the crest of the chine bone, and just pulling it forward. Turn with the bone. tenderloin. We're coming to the finish. What's left? Fresh ham. This requires attention because there's very little fat here. You don't want it to be dry. Now I'm going to remove the tail. There's a lot to eat here. Deep fried, braised. This is dinner. The hind foot. You clip it right above the joints. Not as good eating as the front foot. And this portion over here is the ham hock. We just learned all the different components from half a pig. Now all this, what's this?